Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Support comes from the University of Alaska College Savings Plan, helping you and your child save for college every step of the way, from diapers to diploma. More information at uacollegesavings.com. The National Weather Service. Hello and welcome to the Thursday edition of Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Kimberly Hepner, and today is October 13th, 2016. When we're not here, you can always check out our information by going to weather.gov slash Alaska and clicking on the destination of your choice. If you'd like to receive your forecast via the phone line, that's 1-800-472-0391. And as always, you can always email us by typing in the following address, nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov, and make sure uh, you can bring your suggestions or any questions that you might have uh, via the email for the TV desk. Now, just taking a look at the schedule changes up here, you can uh, you know, accommodate your schedule by going to the channels at these following times, or you could also go to the YouTube channel uh, and research uh, the AK Weather site and then choose the video tab at the top. Now looking at your weather for this week, uh, what's driven by the satellite is you're going to notice um, a large clearing area here during the afternoon hours. This is a high pressure center that's across the region. Across the central areas of the state, it does appear to look a little bit darker gray and that's just because of the colder temperatures in the morning. It's actually quite clear across the entire state today. Now looking across the southeast, we have a low pressure system that that's moving just into the southeastern region of the Gulf of Alaska with another low pressure system just to its south. However, this is merely just bringing some rain showers as we'll get to your weather map in just a moment. You'll see putting that into motion, you can see that spin. And the other low pressure system that's out there is just centered near St. Paul Island. This afternoon, the center near St. Paul was a 992 millibar low, just a rather weak surface uh, feature with a weak disturbance across the upper levels. So we have another encrouching system just to the south. However, the upper level system that's ridging near the Bering Strait, that's going to keep these low pressure systems from making any advancement. Now the low pressure this afternoon towards the southeast of the Dixon entrance is centered uh, just to the south side of or the, just south of the Gulf of Alaska. This system is fairly weak too just with the boundary. I left the boundary off so you can see the cloud cover associated with this system. System. And then here's the, all the clearing across the state with the ridging uh, at the surface just off the northeastern Beaufort Sea Coast. We had some very strong wind gusts of across the eastern Beaufort Sea coast between 40 and 50 miles per hour out of the east direction. The other location that experienced gusts today between 30 and 40 miles per hour were uh, across the northern inner channels down there in the southeast. Uh, fairly quiet across most of the area today inland with the southwestern areas uh, seeing the warmest temperatures so far. And now looking across the uh, forecast for tonight, the low pressure systems are going to be nearly stationary and the one out towards the west will just kind of be weakening in place. Some patchy fog across the central areas of the bearing with some light rain along a deformation zone between the ridging to the north and low pressure to the south. Out here across the south, uh, southeastern areas of the state, they might see some light flurries or light snow in the higher elevations, especially um, those elevations near Mendenhall Valley, but mainly any precipitation will be uh, with temperatures in mainly in the mid 30s to lower 40s, they'll be seeing some rain as they did earlier today. Now across the northern coastal areas, expect some patchy fog mainly just off the coast and the high pressure system will begin to sag south. Um, however, it's not extremely noticeable across the state, but the upper level ridge is what's really going to be 
uh, retrograding there to the west. Uh, we might see a few more showers there across Kodiak Island. Otherwise, fairly quiet conditions uh, from the western Gulf areas into the eastern areas of Bristol Bay and, and the eastern Bering. Looking at your forecast as we head into Friday, not much change uh, other than the low pressure system might send some shower activity a little bit further north of Juneau, but this ridging, like I said, that's gonna keep everything in its place. What we might see is an increase in the winds across the Alaska range here as we get some colder air mass just kind of working its way to the south. Also, the winds across an eastern Beaufort Sea coast will be on the decrease. However, the ridge at the surface will be shifting to the west and that'll cause a little bit more of a squeeze across that northwest western coast. So from Barrow to the west, expect winds to start to increase probably Thursday night. Now across the western areas of the state, mainly clear conditions with offshore flow, a little bit of an increase there across the central interior. However, uh, quiet conditions along the coastal areas. And then the low pressure system out towards the west, the one will be diminishing that's moving up from the North Pacific, and the other low pressure system will continue to weaken with another uh, development of a low pressure system just south of Kamchatka there. And shower activity will continue with a stronger westerly flow between 20 to 30 miles per hour there across the Aleutians and just creeping into the western areas, areas of the Alaska Peninsula. Quiet for the Gulf on Friday with those clear conditions ensuing, possibly um, some gusty flow out of Thompson Pass there as the pressure gradient starts to tighten with the ridging uh, sh pushing further to the south. And we'll see that more into your Saturday forecast. An interesting change here on the Saturday forecast is you see the cloud cover starting to increase. Well, we have the high pressure a lot that's going to be centering near the Bering Strait. However, at the same time, we're going to have an upper level low pressure system uh, along the eastern areas of the Gulf, and that's going to help pull some moisture and kind of a conveyor belt bringing it across the state. So this will be an area to watch for the snow and the rain showers, how far north and how far west they make it. For now, uh, the area just along the Alcan border is going to be seeing possibly some snow showers there. And some snow will develop probably Friday night into Saturday from the Eastern Brooks Range and north from Dead Horse to Barrow. Now, Conditions across the west coast will be a little bit gustier there um, towards the Seward Peninsula with lighter flow uh, along the Kuskokwim Delta. However, they'll see an increased northerly flow with the gradient tightening just slightly. Now, the western areas of the Bering will still see that low pressure system bring some shower activity uh, from the south. However, we do have another building ridge. This will um, act to tighten the gradient across the eastern Aleutians and the western Alaska Peninsula. So look for a stronger northerly component to the wind picking up on your Saturday. Now across the south central areas of the state for Saturday, another clear day expected. The Copper River Basin is going to see some really cold temperatures uh, through, through the weekend because the cold air mass is going to be dropping to the south and with the cloud temperatures, their daytime highs will be cold, but however, that might keep their overnight temperatures from getting cold as they are going to be tonight and the next night. Looking at your temperatures for today, uh, after the Copper River Basin actually started off in the lower single digit numbers with Glen Allen coming in at five degrees, they warmed up across the area in the 40s to 50s along South Central and the warmest temperatures being um, out towards the west for King Salmon getting up to 62 today. The southeast did see some cloud cover, so temperatures uh, stayed into the upper 40s across the uh, southern channels there and towards the northern panhandle. They saw temperatures up into the mid 50s. Looking to the northern areas of the state, they stayed fairly cold today, especially around Arctic Village there, only uh, seeing up to around the freezing degree mark and just under. Along the northeastern Beaufort Sea coast, cold there in the upper 20s towards Point, Point Lay, and then a slow increase in temperatures down towards the uh, Seward Peninsula up into the mid 40s. Looking at the southwest, the warmest areas of the state today, like I said, King Salmon up to 62, and then the Alaska Peninsula was also in the 
mid to upper 50s. The Bering and areas west, they saw temperatures in the mid to upper 40s to near 50 degrees there at the Pribilofs. Now for your overnight temperatures, not much of a fluctuation, but down into the low to mid 40s for much of the Bering and Alaska Peninsula. Colder inland along the west coast there near freezing or just above um, along the coast. And then across the areas inland, expect temperatures depending on where you're at. Uh, the coldest to the eastern areas of the state in the single digits again or lower teens. And as you head towards the Gulf waters, you'll see temperatures near freezing and just below in the mid 20s. Western Gulf locations will see in the mid 40s. and. The southeastern areas will be a little bit colder tonight, around 40 degrees. Some areas will creep down into the 30 degree range. Also across the north and northwest coast, temperatures up there will be in the mid 20s to lower 30s. Looking at your temperatures for tomorrow, very similar um, to today, perhaps just a degree or too colder. So for the southeast, they'll be the warm as they were today in the upper 40s to and lower 50s depending on where that cloud cover they'll probably be slightly warmer there in the panhandle and the warmest temperatures will be around the gulf waters uh, to the west and we'll see alaska peninsula in the mid 50s on towards the central and interior areas we'll see temperatures only getting into the lower 40s with temperatures along the north and west coast into the lower 30s with the seward peninsula once again into the mid to upper 40s the bearing will also see temperatures in the upper 40s once again very similar um, to, from today. Now along the north and west areas of the state, we're expecting MVFR, IFR conditions uh, just along the Brooks Range and north towards the northwest coast and also around the central areas of the Pribilofs. So that'll be a concern. We'll also see some concern around the low pressure system out here just in the eastern areas of the Gulf of Alaska. And then for your afternoon, the conditions will be pretty much the same. However, that cold air mass, a little weak boundary there might cause some patchy fog conditions there across the southwest along the Aleutian Range and the western areas of the Gulf. Now along the northern areas, stationary boundary up there ridging to the north and that'll stretch all the way out into the bearing with the low pressure out there. So just look for uh, patchy MVFR conditions mainly with ceilings and then the fog across the central and western areas of the bearing. Looking at conditions for your, your, uh, your <laughs> Your passes, the Anatovic Pass will be MVFR to VFR conditions in the afternoon. Adigan Pass will also MVFR to VFR. And we'll see Lake Clark and Merrill Pass go MVFR to VFR. And possibly a little bit of patchy fog during the afternoon hours still. Rainy will be MVFR to VFR as well. And then Windy will be VFR conditions across South Central, all VFR for Isabel and then for Mentasta and as well as Tanita. And we'll see Portage VFR, all clear conditions there for Chilkoot and White Pass as well. Now looking at your freezing levels for tomorrow, that's pretty much drawn across the northwestern areas of the state down towards the northeastern Gulf into the southeast for, uh, like I said, this is tomorrow morning's freezing levels and the 2,000 foot level just across the eastern area of the state and then climbing to 8,000 feet as you head further west into that ridging zone. And then it decreases once again from east to west across the bearing down to 4,000 feet. Looking at your icing for tomorrow, main concern is going to be across much of the bearing between six to 8,000 feet and also across the southern areas of the Gulf of Alaska towards the Dixon entrance. Looking at your jet stream for tomorrow, here's that ridge that's going to be cut off um, along the Chukchi Sea there. And then the jet stream is going to be quite strong and detached just to the south of the Aleutians and the Gulf of Alaska. Looking at your 9,000 foot level, here's that ridging to the north across the bearing and a change of wind direction across the bearing around the low pressure system. However, winds around this low pressure system only 15 to 20 knots. Across much of the inland areas, we'll have a northerly flow 15 to 25 knots, a little bit of a speed max there in the central interior and a change of wind direction around the low pressure system 
just to the southeast of the Dixon entrance. Now looking at your 3,000 foot winds, very similar pattern. Uh, the stronger winds here to the north and northwest at 30 knots out of the easterly direction and a weaker flow out here towards the bearing around the two low pressure systems out there. Now to sum all this up in your turbulence map, the main areas to be concerned about is going to be across the interior and to the north and northwest as we get a little bit of a speed max around that high pressure system. Now in just a moment, we'll be back with your marine forecast. October Planet Parade. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. It's October and we have an interesting lineup of planets for your viewing pleasure. That's right, James. We have Venus, Saturn, and Mars in the evening. And the reappearance of Jupiter in the morning sky. Let's show you. Okay, we have our skies set up for the beginning of next week, Monday, October 17th, just after sunset, facing southwest. Near the horizon, you can easily spot the planet Venus among the stars of Scorpius to Scorpion. Venus is a little over 118 million miles away from us right now, but even at that great distance, we can see its dazzling brilliance near the star Deshuba. It won't stay near Deshuba for long. As we advance time, you will see it cruise right past Deshuba on its way to a rendezvous with the star Antares. Here's where Venus will be on October 18th, 19th, and 20th when it passes closest to Deshuba. As we continue to advance time past the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, Venus begins moving between Antares and the ring planet Saturn. Saturn still looks good through a small telescope, despite being over a billion miles away from us right now. And it's getting farther each day. Therefore, we strongly encourage you to get a peek at Saturn through a telescope sometime over the next few weeks. And mark your calendars for the evening of Thursday, October 27, when Saturn, Venus, and Antares meet for a rare equidistant lineup just after sunset. We'll talk more about that next week. Saturn is what we call a gas giant or Jovian planet. It's primarily composed of hydrogen and helium, and its rotation causes it to have an M&M &M shape. Saturn also has a hot interior, reaching almost 21,000 degrees Fahrenheit at its core, and it radiates two and a half times more energy into space than it receives from the Sun. While Saturn has 95 times the mass of the Earth, Jupiter has 318 times the mass of the Earth. Together, Jupiter and Saturn make up 92% of the total planetary mass in the solar system. Let's now look a little farther south, an hour after sunset on October 16th. You'll see the red planet Mars gradually moving away from the teapot-shaped grouping of stars in Sagittarius the Centaur Archer. This week, you'll see Mars zip past the star Nunki, which marks the top of the teapot's handle. Nunki is approximately 225 light years away from us and is over 3300 times as luminous as our sun. Because of its location close to the ecliptic, Nunki can be occulted by the moon and very rarely by planets. The last time Mars occulted Nunki was on September 3rd, 423 AD. Since antiquity, Mars has been universally associated with gods of war, pestilence, and death. The planets were considered divine, and their peculiar movements were interpreted as messages from the gods, expressing their pleasure or displeasure with the doings of mankind. We're getting farther away from Mars right now, but every 26 months when the Earth catches up to Mars, Mars brightens. The brightening of Mars reminded people of this celestial connection to war, and so they came to expect the heavenly unleashing of war, disasters, and death. Even the modern symbol for Mars is still the stylized Roman sword and shield. For you early morning planet watchers, we have the reappearance of Jupiter in the morning sky. Within an hour before sunrise, look low in the east and you'll see a steady white light among the stars of Virgo the Maiden. On the morning of October 28th, the waning crescent moon appears very close to Jupiter in the eastern sky. 
you'll be able to see Earth shine, that faint glow of light reflecting off the Earth and illuminating the nighttime side of the moon. With Jupiter nearby, the image of the pairing will be breathtaking. So there you have it, a planetary parade for October. Keep, Keep looking, looking up. Welcome back to the show. Well, if you're a stargazer, the next several days will certainly not be disappointing for you. Okay, let's head on to your marine forecast. Taking a look to the north, you see the colder uh, blue temperatures up here are mainly about three degrees and a little bit colder. So we did see some development of ice today across the uh, uh, pretty much w just east of Barrow and on over to Kaktovik. So that's a new formation there. However, we did see to the northwest of Barrow, this ice area has retreated a little bit. So there's some melting going on uh, just to the northwest. Looking at your southeastern area for your marine waters, look for a stronger flow across the inner channels out of the north tomorrow between 25 to 30 knots. And once again, we'll see in the northern channels, we'll see those gusts up to 45 knots. As you head towards the Dixon entrance, the flow becomes more east to southeast there at 15 to 20 knots and a little bit stronger flow there in the outer waters. Uh, small craft advisories out there for the east winds at 25 knots and just to the north as um, you get closer to Yakutat, it'll taper off down towards the 15 knot range. Inner channels for seas tomorrow will be between four to six feet with the outer waters between seven to eight feet. Heading into your Saturday, look for lighter winds across those inner channels, 15 to 20 knots, becoming southeast again towards the Dixon entrance at 20 knots and the outer waters will be between 20 to 25 knots. So just some small craft advisories there in inner channel waves will be between three to four feet and the outer waters will be eight to ten feet looking at your south central forecast we'll see lighter wind speeds in this direction um, mostly variable across the area 10 to 15 knots with some seas between one to two feet across the cook inlet the prince william sound the western areas of the gulf will see between seven to nine feet and then across the shellacoff strait and near the Amatui Islands, we'll see two to three foot seas. On your Saturday, look for uh, more of a north to northeasterly direction, uh, becoming more east out towards Middleton Island there with the strongest winds across the western areas of the Gulf. But overall, 15 to 20 knots isn't that bad. And we'll see Cook Inlet around three foot seas there, as well as the Prince William Sound in the western areas of the Gulf, we'll see five to six foot seas with Shellacoff Strait on the lower end there, two to three feet. And then for your Friday forecast across, across the Alaska Peninsula, expect a northwesterly component to the wind at 15 knots. Seas on the Bering side, four to six feet and eight to 11 feet on the Pacific side. Your Saturday forecast will change a wind direction there, going from northeast to northwest and becoming more westerly south of the peninsula. Seas will be four to six feet and eight to 11 foot on the Pacific side. Now looking at your winds for the Aleutian area, we're going to see a westerly flow 25 to 30 knots, so small crafts out there, and seas will be between 9 to 14 feet, the highest seas out towards the west. Heading into your Saturday, we'll see the strongest winds towards the east, a little bit lighter speeds out towards the western Aleutians, and then seas on this day will be generally 7 to 13 feet. The highest seas will be along the southern areas of the central Aleutians. Looking at your west coast forecast for Friday, looking at uh, wind speeds between 10 to 20 knots, and that will be out of the north and northeasterly direction primarily. Seas between three to six feet on this day. A little bit higher seas out towards the Pribilof Islands and the northern areas of the Bering. Look for winds changing direction slightly across the St. Paul, um, picking up a 20 knot wind there out of the northwest. Overall, a northerly flow, 15 to 20 knots for the area. Again, seas will be four to six feet. And then across the north and northwest coast, expect stronger winds for tomorrow between 20 to 30 knots, with Kotzebue Sound a little bit lower, around 15 knots. Seas on this day will be 
between 6 and 11 feet, a little bit uh, smaller heights there towards Kotzebue and freezing, space, freezing spray up there towards the eastern Beaufort Seacoast. On Saturday, still freezing spray. Winds getting a little bit lighter, however, around 15 knots, a little bit stronger around the northwestern areas, and Kotzebue will be at 15 knots changing out of the northeasterly direction. Uh, along the coast, we'll see 5 to 9 foot seas with a smaller heights three feet around the eastern boat for sea coast. Now looking at a recap of your forecast, we're going to have high pressure that's settling in across the state, some shower activity across the southeast as we head into the overnight hours, some light snow possible near Mendenhall Valley, some light showers maybe across the western areas of the Bering, and again across the western Bering, the low pressure system is kind of sagging. So the low pressure system will continue to diminish in these areas. However, showers and westerly winds stay up. Winds will be also a little bit stronger across the northwest on Friday. And then we'll also see an offshore component picking up later on Friday, bring some gustier winds to channel terrain uh, along the northeastern the northeastern Gulf waters there. And then the southeast will see some light shower activity continuing into Saturday with some light snow showers and mixed rain along the northern channels up towards Skagway. So look for also possible snow showers just to the north of the Alaska range as the colder air begins to drop towards the south and the moisture comes up from the Gulf. Look for colder temperatures to really be sagging all the way through the rest of the state as we head through the weekend. So the theme is going to be drier across the interior and colder as we head into the weekend with shower activity continuing across the western areas of the Bering and looking for the offshore flow picking up across the Thompson Pass area as we head into Saturday as the central areas of the state start seeing this gradient squeeze. So might see some gustier conditions along the Alaska range. So that'll be an area of concern for aviation purposes. However, the concerns for the Marines is going to improve for the Gulf for the most part for the upcoming weekend. Thanks for staying with us. We'll see you again tomorrow. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Support comes from the University of Alaska College Savings Plan, helping you and your child save for college every step of the way, from diapers to diploma. More information at uacollegesavings.com.